Today, all we need to do to win the game is draw as many cards as possible, which means this is definitely my kind of deck. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and today we are doing my favorite thing in all of Magic, which is drawing as many cards as possible, but in this deck, thanks to our namesake Prof's Eidetic Memory, drawing as many cards as possible actually just ends up winning us the game really quickly. So let's talk about what this deck's trying to do, jump into some games, and see Prof's Eidetic Memory in action. So we are built around Prof's Eidetic Memory. This is, I think, kind of a sleeper card from Murders of Karlov Manor. It's a card I've wanted to build around for a while, but I haven't really seen anyone playing or talking about it. This is actually a deck from an infamous small Japanese tournament, so I figured we'd give this one a try. So Prof's Eidetic Memory, two mana enchantment, when ETBs, we get to draw a card. So the floor is already pretty high, right? Like worst case, we don't even care about the effect. It's two mana, draw a new card. So two mana cycling gives us no max hand size, which is rarely relevant in this deck. The big deal is at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we've drawn one or more extra cards this turn, we put X plus one plus one counters on target creature we control where X is the number of cards we've drawn minus one. So essentially the card we've draw for our draw step doesn't count, but any additional cards are gonna give us plus one plus one counters on our creature. So this is the big payoff in our deck. Our deck is full of these underpowered creatures that draw us cards, but then Prop's Eidetic Memory turns them into these massive evasive threats really, really quickly. It's actually kind of absurd. So our creatures, Evangel of Sithis, ETBs, loots, and then gets menace sometimes. Ledger Shredder, when someone casts their second spell, we get to connive, so it's looting, drawing cards, turning in Prop's Eidetic Memory, and it has flying. Rona Herald of Invasion just taps to loot. We could maybe flip it someday. And then the biggest payoff is actually Steam Core Scholar of all things. A three mana two two flying vigilance. When the ETBs, we double loot unless we discard an instant sorcery creature with flying, then we get to keep one of the cards. If you think about how this works, our nut draw with this deck is we like Prof's Identic Memory on turn two draw a card. Turn three, we Steam Core Scholar. That's going to draw us two extra cards. We go to combat. Steam Core Scholar becomes a 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance. So it becomes a Sarah Angel. The turn it comes into play for three mana. And then the next turn, thanks to all of our other card draw effects, it's pretty realistic that Steam Core Scholar can be like a 9-9 nine, nine or 10-10 ten, ten Flying Vigilance on turn four. Like, that's what this deck does. The rest of our deck is a bunch more card draw. Consider, draws a card, fills a graveyard, opt, draws a card, scries. The big payoff here is Treasure Cruise. Treasure Cruise is already an absurd card. And because of our eluding effects, our deck's really good at filling the graveyard quickly. But Treasure Cruise is already absurd. It's one mana draw three, typically, because we can delve a bunch of cards away. But it's even more absurd in our deck, because now it's one mana draw three, put three plus one plus one counters on our Ledger Shredder, or Steam Core Scholar, or Evangel of Synthesis, thanks to Prof's Eidetic Memory. So that's all the deck really does. Play Prof's Eidetic Memory, play these looting creatures, draw as many cards as possible. Otherwise, Thought Seize gives us some discard to disrupt our opponent's hand. A bit of removal, mana base pretty typical stuff. Uh, in the sideboard, we get a bunch of discards, some grindy stuff like Cryptico and Kaido Suzuki for control. For aggro, Meat Hook Massacre is a sweeper, some more removal, some graveyard heat, some damping sphere for combo. And that is Prop's Eidetic Memory for Pioneer. And that's our deck for today. So let's jump into some games and see just how many cards we need to draw to win the game with Prop's Eidetic Memory. This deck's so sweet. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the token signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtdgoldfishmerch.com. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtdgoldfish. It is pioneer time this week. <laughs> we are seeing if we can win by drawing as many cards as possible. We are playing Prof's Eidetic Memory, and uh, I've been wanting to build around this card for a while, and then I found, like, this infamous small Japanese tournament deck that was built around it. I was like, you know what? Let's just jam this deck and see how it goes. So I'm actually really excited to, uh, to give this deck a go and see if we can win just by drawing as many cards as possible, pretty much. Opponent going to five. Uh, okay, off to a good start. <laughs> uh, this hand, it's a little awkward that we don't have a creature. Oh, Boros. All right, Boros is scary. Boros mulligans a lot, because in Boros, you'd rather have your, uh, your nut draw than just like an average hand of nothingness. So don't feel too bad. So we need to find a creature. We have all the card draw. We have the Prop's Eidetic Memory. We just don't have a way to to use it to put counters on things because we don't have a thing <laughs> for the counters. Vordaren Epica. 
Uh, sure. Down to 18. You gonna sack your blood? You have even, all right. The one drops have arrived. Well, let's just opt. Fatal push, probably gotta keep it. If we fatal push here, our opponent can't Knight Errant next turn. Well, even more fatal pushes. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we could play Prophesy Identic Memory, but we don't have a creature at the moment anyway, so let's just kill a dork. Like I was saying, keeping our opponent below... Well, okay, if they go land in a knight, then we can't really do anything about it. Oh, venerate it. Well, we had the right idea. Our opponent drew the land, so we couldn't stop it, but... Dark Slick Shores, do we want more land? Probably not. All right, so opponent's got a clock going. Oh, there we go. There we go. Steam Core Scholar is exactly what we were hoping for. Thoughts he's not so much. Let's get down Prof's eidetic memory. So I think our hope now is like just to outscale our opponent. Kill the Thrabes. So we take six down to 12, but next turn we can make a four, four Steam Core. Actually, we make a five, five, right? If we consider. Wow, maybe Prof's eidetic memories gonna pop off here opponent clue sure draws a card <laughs> well let the card drawing begin see if this card's actually any good we have very mixed results with infamous small japanese tournament decks sometimes they're like the coolest decks and they're so good sometimes they're the like oh i top aided a eight person event and you're like <laughs> yay opponent hits us down to 12 sure we draw a consider well are we thought seizing Hmm, this pathway kind of makes us make a choice here. We could draw into another land. I mean, I guess we can Steam Core first. Yeah, let's Steam Core first, see what we hit. So we need to discard Instant Sorcerer or Flyer. Oh, the question is the Thought Seize, really. Are we casting Thought Seize or are we considering? What kills us? Obviously more Loxodons, Knight Errants is bad. Yeah, let's just pitch a Consider. We have two of them. Play the land on black, and I think we will just, we'll play it safe. Uh, oh, all right, that worked. I am glad we thought seized, and now we get to grow it. We drew two extra cards, and we get a four or four. It's kind of funny, Steam Core Scholar is like the best threat in the deck because it has vigilance and flying. So we can grow it, we can smash our opponent, and have it back on defense. Since we have another one in hand, I think if our opponent attacks with the Loxodon, we do probably trade here. This is where we want to be, though, because now we, got, we have the memory down. So now we just start churning through our deck, drawing all the cards, and eventually make a big enough creature to kill our opponent. Another novice inspector, sure, sure, sure. Actually, if our opponent attacks, do we just kill the epic here and take four? Opponent didn't really want another land, but none of the bugbears. If you're gonna draw a land, that's a good one. Well, yeah, I guess we scholar again. Draw a couple cards. Yeah, let's just discard to consider. Uh, now we have the same choice as last. Well, now we also have Roma. Do we leave up removal or do we consider to grow our steam core even bigger? So if they swing out, we block here, we block here. Yeah, let's consider. I don't think we need a second memory. Thought sees. All right, well, that's what we got for now. It's super counterintuitive, but I actually think we put it on the smaller one. If we put it on the smaller one, we can't attack with it because it's summoning sick, but we can block two things profitably rather than just one. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it that way. Get in, hit ya. So it's gonna be close. If they fire up the den of the bugbear, we block, block. We take one, two, three, four, five. They also have the Sheffit Dunes. I guess the risk would be them drawing removal. If they draw removal spell. But if they draw removal, they can't den of the bugbear. So hopefully we're good. I mean, the other good news, wow, opponent just cracked the clue. The other good news is we're like a two turn clock. If we get lucky and draw like a treasure cruise, maybe a one turn, we could do a next turn even. Just let us draw our cards. It'll be fine. Opponent has drawn a lot of Thraben Inspectors. <laughs> it's like number four or something. Inspector, cracks it, clue, draws. So our opponent, they can't really attack here, right? Like the attack would be horrible for them. Opponent passes. So if we thought sees, we drop to eight. Oh, I wanna know what that last card is. Yeah, I think we can do it. Wow! It was a, wow, it was Amidane's Recruiter. Ooh, that could have maybe killed us. All right, get in hit ya. And now we should be good, right? Assuming they don't top deck another recruiter. Even with another recruiter, we might be good. Maybe we didn't even die to the recruiter. Opponents at six. Definitely lethal next turn. In Steam, Warden of the Inner Sky, sure. Little bit late to actually matter. Can our opponent make it big enough to block? It does get flying eventually. One, two, three, one, two. I don't think they can. I mean, I think that just does it. Looks like game to me. All right, well. <laughs> 
<laughs> Boros is always scary because they can have such explosive draws, but turns out that uh, Steam Core Scholar, once you make it like a 4-4 four four <laughs> or a 5-5, five five, actually pretty good at shutting down aggro. I mean, this was like literally a prof's memory kill, right? Like, could you imagine without the counters, we'd just be doing nothing. We'd be doing literally nothing. We'd have like two twos. There's no way we'd win the race, but the counters let us play defense and are going to let us kill our opponent pretty quickly. Maybe prof's eidetic memory is actually good. Uh, wow, opponent taps and passes and treasure crews. We don't even really need to show it here. Like... Opponent's got no cards, no blockers for flyers. Get in with the scholars and opponent scoops it up. That went oddly well. <laughs> okay, that went that went pretty well. The scary thing is, we don't really have great sideboard options for this matchup. I mean, we have two meat hooks, which are great, but we don't have like hard sweepers and we don't have more cheap removal. We could bring a blot out, I guess. Yes, it's just, it's good. It's nice that it gets the biggest thing or most expensive thing. The only problem is it is kind of slow. Three mana, we could be dead. <laughs> we could be dead by that time. But we definitely want the meatballs. Do a little, a little trimming. Maybe the thought seize. Shield it's probably also fine. Yeah, let's just go down thought seizes. Thought seize can just be too slow, right? There's times when it's good when we're snaking a night early. We'll bring in one blood out for the last thought seize, but it's also pretty bad off the top. We do have some ways to discard it, but all right. On a game two, Boros on the play. One of the scariest <laughs> phrases in Pioneer. We do have some early removal and a decent curve. Ledger Shredder can. Uh, do a little growing. We'll keep it. All right, opponent's keeping six this time. A little bit more than last time. Land and Voldaren Epica. Sure. Down to 19. Well, let's just play the Black Source. Pathways. <laughs> Pathways. Making us choose our colors. Opponent, land and. Or into the inner sky. Uh huh. I mean, we are going to fatal push that. Three bit inspector, kill the warden. <laughs> when the Boros deck is not running impressively, it looks pretty bad. When it runs well, it is the one of the scariest aggro decks in the format. Maybe the scariest. But when it runs poorly, it is kind of just playing a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of one mana one ones and one mana one twos. Land. I mean, they could play a Loxodon or a, wow, main phase crew crackage. Not a sign of strength. <laughs> Not a sign of strength at all. Another epic ah, sure. And passes. Ooh, double ledger shredder. Well, play the ledger shredder, play the land. Can yeah, let's opt. Do some opting. Get a few triggers. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> Bonner does not even wait to see the meat hook master come down. Cannot beat the ledger shredders. And that was pretty good. If we can keep doing that with this deck, maybe this deck is really good. Smiley face for sure. For off identic memory time. And we will play, oh God, uh, zero. Come on, magic gods. <laughs> Uh, zero lander into zero lander into functional. We got some removal. Going to five is never good. I mean, if there's good news, our deck, hmm. Yeah, let's keep this. Our deck does have a lot of card draw. So it is possible we can dig out of this. Although obviously we would rather just start with a bunch of cards. Edgewall Innkeeper. Uh, well, let's thought seize you. So opponent's adventures? Interesting. Well, we're going to take... I, I've played enough innkeepers in standard to know if an innkeeper sticks, the card advantage is going to wreck us. So I think we just got to let our opponent play these Lucky Clovers and hope for the best. All right, Lucky Clover. Well, let's get down the Vangel. I mean, our next step is... Ooh, Treasure Cruise. All right, we're going to uh, pitch the Fatal Push. Treasure Cruise is one of those cards that can undo a mold of five. We're not quite there yet. But our deck's pretty good at filling the graveyard. Treasure Cruise is a really, really strong card. Well, play the land. We need like one more card. I guess we can, I guess we can cast a lock, Wayne. We'd only have one card in hand. Opponent. <laughs> Their adventures will be, ooh, Picnic Ruiner. I am very scared of Picnic Ruiner because of standard Thought Seize A. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's Thawsies. Opponent. <laughs> More lucky clovers and Embercleave. So if they rhyme rock knight, 
It doesn't have trample, so we can chump. Embercleave just kills us if they get to it. I think we've given up on the Lucky Clovers. They already have two. What's a third? If you're already double copying your adventures, one more copying is not going to make a difference. Maybe we, I think it's either Embercleave or Lovestruck Beast. I think we can play around the pump spell by blocking. Lovestruck Beast making three one ones. That's a lot of bodies to fight through. So I guess we can just shock and treasure cruise. Treasure cruise, so absurd. I mean, it's really absurd anyway, but if you have prophesied memory, three counters and a new hand, uh, unfortunately we can't really attack. Too risky, like double, potentially triple Lucky Clover in the pump spell, Rhyme Rock Knight. I think we we definitely just die if we don't block here. Thoskies is not the word. Wow, opponent. Not pretentious, just fires it off. I was thinking we'd have to like block our opponent, then they cast it or something, or they wait till after blocks and try to get us, but they're just they're just firing it off. Well, I mean, that is a huge double striker, but we will block it. Not dead yet. Keep us churning through our deck, looking for the memory. Hmm. I think we got a pitch opt. We need a thought seize. And we need the fatal push. I don't even know if we play the channel land. We might just hold on to it. We have enough lands to function. Like, because we have so much card draw, having the lands is good. We don't have that much removal left. Let's just play the Rona. Play the Rona. Pass the turn. Our opponent shouldn't be able to do anything too scary this turn. They can't Ember Cleave us, right? All right, they just play the Rhyme Rock Knight. That is fine. Well, uh, let's take a little peek at what our opponent's got going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> They've drawn every Lucky Clover, and there's also a Almighty Brushwag. Are they, is our opponent memeing, or is their deck actually optimal for Brushwag? <laughs> I'm actually really coming around on Steam Core Scholar being a good card. I don't know, during spoiler season, I'm like, oh, it's fine. It reminds me of, like, Champion of Wits a little bit. But the combination of, of Flying and Vigilance makes it a lot better than I realized. Opponent, Lucky Clover, part three. I mean, if our opponent ever finds an adventure, it is going to be quite the adventure. Opponent gets in with the Rhyme Rock Knight. I mean, we can loot. We're definitely going to loot. In this deck, it is, I think, always 100% correct to loot. Just because of Treasure Cruise. Let's loot with Rona. We might actually be discarding a Ledger Shredder, come to think of it. We can get rid of a Tuara. Just block with the Scholar. And now we can Ledger Shredder. Well, we can cancel Lock Queen first, draw a card. More Scholars, more Rotas. So we really need to leave up the Fatal Push because the easiest way to die, honestly, oddly, ironically, uh, this Almighty Bush Spike is pretty scary. <laughs> Let's do a little conniving with this Ledger Shredder. Draw with the Scholar. Where's our memory? Well, let's discard, I guess, Rona and Land. We could have just discarded the Ledger Shredder, but I think it's better to uh, to go both here. So if we leave up the Fatal Push, what I'm scared of is dying to this Almighty Brushwag in a Pump Spell. Especially an Adventure Pump Spell with triple, quadruple Lucky Clover. <laughs> that is legitimately frightening. Found it. Even more Lucky Clovers and passes well rona gonna do some drawing discard the fast land we could flip rona at some point maybe we are very good at drawing ledger shredder that is for sure ledger shredder part two ledger shredder tron assembled uh yeah discard evangel we're holding on to this fatal push pretty much no matter what i don't know if there's anything that would make us pitch that well get in get in hit ya I mean, we're building a clock now. We're getting there. Four Lucky Clovers <laughs> and a Brushwag and a Picnic Ruiner. What do you got about it? What do you got? We are getting lucky that our opponent is not drawn adventures. <laughs> Four Lucky Clovers with an adventure is so ridiculous. Wow, okay. Picnic Ruiner. So three counters times four, five? That is actually going to be a very mighty Brushwag. Uh, let's see what our opponent targets. So they put some on the Picnic Ruiner. It seems like the incentive is to grow the Brushwag, right? Since it has Trample. We can kill a thing with this Fatal Push. Brushwag. And we also want to, like... <sighs> hopefully they put them all in the Brushwag. Or most of them. Because we want to kill it and then we fizzle the Picnic Ruiner to the original copy. So it doesn't go on an adventure. Yeah, alright. Well, Brushwag down. Our opponent still has a 5-5. Five -five. Wow, goes attacking. We do need to block, because it gets double strike. Let's block with a little Ledger Shredder. 
untap. So we can Rona, or we could play the land, Castle Lockway, and then Rona. I think our most expensive card is three mana. So even if we do that, we can still cast pretty much anything, right? I mean, we're definitely Castle Lockwaning. Do we play the land first? I think, I think it's worth it. Yeah, let's play the land, Castle Lockway, and draw a card. Can't trigger the ledger shredders. Let's do some attacking. Get and hit ya. See, this is like another example of why the vigilance is so huge on the Steam Core Scholars. Draw. Discard. The fatal push. It's just like so big because we get to get in the damage and we get, have another another chump blocker back in case we need it. So hopefully we're, yeah, opponent scoops it up. Wow, we got kind of lucky there. Our opponent, that had to be such a brutal game, drawing four Lucky Clovers, but then just not really finding any adventures to go with them. Although our opponent's playing like a aggro-y adventure deck. So I don't think they're gonna have a lot of the like more controlling, slower adventures. Well, let's bring in some more removal, do a little trimming. I think out of our threats, Evangelist Senthis is probably the worst if you ever need to trim a threat. Ooh, yes, that's what we want to see. That's what we couldn't find last game is Prof's Edric Memory, but now we have it, and we have the Steam Core Scout Brushwag. All right, thought sees you. So I want to take the Lucky Clover, because that's the card we can't kill. The problem is Bone Crusher does disrupt our little synergy here, where we want to play Prof's Edric Memory next turn, and then Steam Core Scholar get the counters on it. They might just Bone Crush our face, because they got nothing else to do. That seems possible. And then we, we get to have our cake and eat it too, so to speak. I mean, I think we got to take Lucky Clover. I think we got to just do it. Like, long, yes, the Bone Crusher is annoying short term, but long term, we can get, we got removal, it can deal with Bone Crusher. Ooh, Innkeeper. Okay, that's actually, so Innkeeper is kind of very strong, but let's get down the Prop Cedric Memory, draw a card. But this might incentivize our opponent to just play the Bone Crusher. If they just play the Bone Crusher here, then we're free to Steam Core Scholar, loot away some of these lands, turn it into a 4 4 Flying Vigilance, build our own Sarah Angel, so to speak, with the upside that it's gonna keep growing. We'll see. So we're hoping they just play the, play the Bone Crusher draw a card, that's fine. Run it out, draw a card, just don't leave out the removal. That would make our plan worse. Are we bone? Aha, okay, Bone Crusher Giant draws with the Innkeeper and hits us for two. Oh my God, that's Treasure Cruise. Well, get down the Steam Core Scholar. Uh, we could discard the Consider, but I think we have so many extra lands and we have a Treasure Cruise that we want to fuel. So let's just discard two lands here. Grow the Scholar, pass the turn. Prof's Edric Memory might actually be good. It might actually be kind of a good card. Only three cards in the graveyard, but the considers, man, next turn might be really explosive. If the Steam Core Scholar lives, it is going to get really big really quick. I'm pretty sure we're not blocking that. We're definitely not blocking Bone Crusher. We would probably block, probably block the Innkeeper. I guess if our opponent has Ember Cleave, do we die? I feel like if your opponent has Ember Cleave, you just always die, right? <laughs> has anyone ever survived Ember Cleave attack? Picnic Ruiner. We will take six. Well, no Ember Cleave at least. All right, let's 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 have fun. So consider, extra card draw number one, mill the land. Into another consider. Play the land? Consider. Probably just mill the Rona. We're trying to fuel the treasure cruise here into even more lands. Treasure cruise. Exile them all. Graveyard does not matter in this deck, so we're pretty free to just clean them all away. Draw three. So five extra cards drawn. So if we thought sees, we can block the Bone Crusher. Our opponent fires up down the Bugbear. One, two, three, the token's four. Brushwig, five, six, Innkeeper, seven. And we'd be at seven because we lose two. So we literally can't thought seize, so I guess we just consider then. Get the max card draw, grow the Scholar as big as possible. Six plus one plus one counters. That is a 10. <laughs> And <laughs> flying vigilance. All right, opponent, kill us if you can, kill us if you can. What if they drew Ember Cleave? Opponent plays the land. So we're not just dead to our opponent's board. We would have been if we thought seized. Flax and Intruder draws a card. If we had had an Ember Cleave here, I'm gonna be a little, a little salty. Just a little, just a smidge sad. Opponent attacks. <laughs> well, we're gonna block the Moan Crusher. Don't cleave us, opponent. Did they draw it off the Flax and Intruder? That'd be so brutal. I feel like I'm just always dead if they Ember Cleave, but are we actually literally? <sighs> We've made a 10-10 Flying Vigilance and it wasn't enough. Opponent. Sma well, we're not 
literally dead yet. We killed the Bone Crusher. Ah, Amber Cleave. I forgot how... <laughs> I forget how devastating the Amber Cleave can be. We draw a fatal push. The problem is we're at two, and they have the creature land and the Amber Cleave. So we can fatal push something, make a blocker die. Well, let's run out the Evangel. Maybe we draw a meat hook. Oh, another props Edric memory. Now I think this means we're just straight up dead. Yeah. Amber Cleave. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're gonna run it back. I feel like we were doing what we wanted to do. We had that absurd turn where we like, oh man, Prop's Edric memory was actually just like going off. We made the 10 10 fire, but <laughs> not Embercleave good, apparently. What if we had Embercleave to this deck? Could you imagine Embercleave on the 10 10 Flying Vigilance? That would actually close out the game. Well, all right, opponent, we're on the play this time. We might not mulligan to five. Eh, that sounds pretty good. I mean, it's a good hand at staying alive. We do not have a Prof Cedric memory, unfortunately, but double removal, ledger setter consider. Seems seems reasonable. Well, apparently Prof Cedric memory can grow creatures pretty quickly. Out of nowhere, our 2-2 is suddenly like a 10-10. And it's only two mana and it cram trips when it ETBs. Why does no one talk about or play Prof Cedric memory? It seems like it's made in... <laughs> Almighty Brushwag. Do we even want to kill it? We could just kill it, but do we even... I don't even think we care at this point. Well, okay. Let's play the land. Get down the Ledger Shredder. Pass the turn. Holding onto the Fatal Push is also good with Ledger Shredder. Just uh, it gives us another cheap way to trigger it. What do you got, opponent? Red Source. And this smells like a Bone Crusher. We will not be blocking this Almighty Brushwag. We will take the one. Picnic Ruiner. I mean, I guess we can just fatal push away our opponent's board. We do want to trigger the ledger shredder. All right, let's consider. We don't, yeah, we're going to mill it. We don't really want to land, although there was some consideration just because it was Castle Lockwain, but we have an, oh, treasure cruise. <laughs> have we reached the part of the game where we're going to be discarding removal spells against the creature deck? Maybe. Actually, can we discard the land? Is that just too greedy? Let's discard the, yeah, let's discard the bitter triumph. Take a peek. Ah, they did have the Bone Crusher. Embercleave, another brush wag. We'll get, after last game, we're definitely getting rid of the Embercleave. We might be able to get a two for one if we stay on defense. If we stay on defense, we can block the Picnic Ruiner. When they go to Rhyme Rocket, we just kill it and then, and then we're good. I guess it's also possible they Bone Crush instead. Abone it. That is an instant, right? Rhyme Rock, Rhyme Rock Knight is definitely an instant. Our opponent, I guess they're just not, not pretentious. <laughs> Both times they've played it, they've played it sorcery speed. Wow, even more treasure crews. Well, how many cards do we have? Five, six, and discard the land. Treasure crew, an opponent scoops it up, and that was a pretty dominating performance. They got us with Ember Cleave in game two, but the stack might actually be good. I'm kind of actually loving this deck. Also, I feel like I got to play more Pioneer slash Explorer. I don't know. I'm just calling them the same thing now. I think whatever. It's close. It's, I mean, hopefully they keep adding the cards. I don't want to make it sound like that. So, Watsy, please, if you're watching this, keep adding the cards. But we're getting close to, close enough, I think, where using one name makes sense. Um, Opponent Rakdosing us, eh? Rakdosing us, a. Eh? Let's play the Black Source. We might want to Fatal Push something. Good old Pathways making us choose our colors of mana on turn one. Well, there's a Treasure Cruise. I do like Treasure Cruise. <clears throat> we'll not complain about that. Well, land on blue. Run out the Rona to its in ep mm, All right, maybe it lives. I figured that was going to get immediately killed, but maybe our opponent does not care about Rona. Oh. Huh? Now I don't know what's going on. I mean, I know what's going on. Our opponent's got to be a dragon deck of some kind, but land on dragon into Rivaz of the Claw. Awkwardly, our fatal pushes are good against aggro. We are not good at triggering revolt. I mean, I think we have to kill the Rivaz, right? I guess we can loot first. Uh, we'll discard it. I mean, we got to kill it. We can't let them just ramp into some huge dragon. Let's pay the three, kill the Rivaz. Land on blue. Go. Oh, man, I am actually afraid now. Our deck is not built to handle big trade. <laughs> Sometimes you just run into these decks where someone, like, our opponents, if they're playing, like, a bunch of five, six mana dragons, which if you're playing Rip, <laughs> suck at Rip as. If you're playing Rip as, I'm assuming you are, it just kind of blanks most of our removal. Like, we have one Bitter Triumph, one Shieldred's Edict in the main. Our Fatal Pushes are going to be dead. Uh, Show us Shieldred's Edict. How about... 
Well, okay. We already have one Steam Core Scholar. Let's just mill it. Thought, okay. Thought sees. This means we're not playing a Steam Core Scholar, but Zergo and Bone Horde and Junji <laughs> and a Rivaz and a Cavern. We're not beating this hand ever. And Rivaz lets our opponent play dragons from the graveyard. But when they die, they go to exile. All right, let's 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 take Junji. Because they can play any dragon we discard anyway. But if we take Junji, at least they won't get the death trigger. Uh, it hurts to treasure cruise without Prop Cedric memory, but... We gotta, we gotta find some cards to do something here. Draw three. Oh, two lands and another Rona. Those were not the three we were hoping. I don't even know what we were hoping for. I mean, I guess our hope is honestly to find Prof's Edric memory and make our Steam Core Scholar big enough to survive the dragons. I think that's the game plan. Opponent. Untapping, you have your choice of three mighty dragons to play. I would probably Zergo Ojutai draw a card. Yeah. Opponent agrees with that assessment. And we're at 15 and we're taking, wow, we're just like kind of dead. We can't, why can't we? Oh, Rivas. Rivas has menace. Ooh. Oh, these fatal pushes are just mocking us. Mocking us. Bound it. It's down to eight. Well, just when I was thinking this deck was <laughs> was great, we run into dragons and get <laughs> absolutely beat down. Absolutely beat down. Yeah, I don't know if there's a card in our deck that saves us here. We just, I know it's in our deck. We don't, uh, Shouldered's Edict is the only removal spell that could theoretically... So I guess what we could do, it's too late for it to really matter now. We could play Rona to legend rule the Rona just to trigger revolt. Ledger Shredder could chump block. The thing is we know they have multiple dragons coming after that. I don't even think that matters. Evangel of Senthus. I think the dragons might just have us here. I mean, we consider, but I don't even know what we're considering for at this point. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> what dragon removal dust we have in our sideboard? The blot outs seem great. That's about it. The fatal pushes seem like pretty close to dead cards. I mean, I guess there's a world where we like have a flyer, we chump lock to trigger, and that'll let us like fatal push or whatever. But like in reality, it is it is not very likely. Blot out does seem good though. It even exiles, so it gets around like Junji and so forth. So opponents like five color Rakdos dragons, I guess. It'd be sweet if there was an actual dragon deck. Uh, we are keeping this. There's something kind of nostalgic about just like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Timmy Dragons. I'm going to just slam them, and I'm going to attack you with them. And, you know, I'm going to see if it gets there. And it definitely got there that game. So I, this hand feels much better, because I do think it's realistic with Prof's Edric Memory. I think our most realistic game plan, since we're not a super removal heavy deck, is just to grow our flyers bigger than the dragons. That's, that's our goal. Get down the memory, draw a card. Because, like, next turn, we can turn the Scholar into a 4-4. Four, four, and then hopefully we can get the Treasure Cruise and just make it so big that the dragons don't matter. Like, that's that's a game plan. Make our stuff so big that we don't care about dragons. They could be leaving up for a It is possible. We're going to play it, though. Run out the run out the Scholar. Draw a couple cards. Discard. Actually, let's discard two because of Treasure Cruise. Let's go land. Let's go land in Evangel. And, well, all right, did not die yet. Get some counters. Scholar up to a 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance. Awkwardly, we could have just discarded Ledger Shredder, but awkwardly, I think looting is just better than having an extra Ledger Shredder in hand here. Well, Opt is not bad. Consider would be better, but let's run out the Ledger Shredder. We can Ledger Shredder into Thoughtseize, into Opt. All right, opponent, what dragons are we? Our opponent's hand is much less frightening without the Rivaz. Like if they're playing their dragons for five, on turn five, we can we can probably outscale that. Dragonfire, revealing Junji, but that's more treasure cruises. Can we, ooh, all right, let's get rid of this Rona. I don't think we're gonna need the Rona this game. It's Sushi, Junji, and Nikki B. Um, I don't really wanna deal with Nicole Bolas. I feel like Nicole Bolas, there is a risk that they flip it eventually. And if they flip it, we're going to have a hard time dealing with it. Uh, so we can't treasure cruise yet, but we can opt. Shouldn't need another Prof's Edric memory. But if we, you could have multiples of these, it would get so wild. <laughs> it's a weird card to be legendary, but now that we've played with it a little bit, I, it would probably be overpowered if it was not legendary. Well, 
Now we're going to go cruising for a bruising. One, two, three, four, five, six, and pay two. So draw three. So we can Shieldred's Edict, I guess, and just get in for a bunch. I guess we don't even need to Shieldred's Edict, right? Let's just let's just Team Core Scholar. Trigger the Ledger Shredder. Discard the Tap Land. Draw some more cards. Discard some more cards. Get rid of this Fatal Push. That's so probably going to do nothing. And uh, that is six plus one plus one counters. And we're just going to go Ledger Shredder. That is a 10-12 opponent. Would you like to block? So opponent's going to get the Death Trigger. But what's the worst? They draw two, I guess. Impulse draw two. Opponent. Two lands. Well, that went about as well as it could. Opponent plays a land. And Junji. We draw even more Steam Core Scholars. All right, let's just keep uh, keep learning. And pitch a... Well, let's pitch two lands. We still have a Treasure Cruise. Discarding two seems worth... Uh, play the land. Yeah, play it untapped. Thought sees you. Ledger Shredder. Pitch a Ledger Shredder. We're holding on all these Treasure Cruises. I don't even know if that's correct, but we're doing it. Leyland of the Void. I feel like our opponent thinks we're a Phoenix deck. Or maybe... <laughs> or maybe they're just... Uh, Afraid of the treasure cruise. I guess it is good against treasure cruise. Well, treasure cruise, draw three more treasure cruises. Six more counters. Going on the scholar. Attack. Wow, this deck, when it pops off, it really goes. Opponent. Would you like to make us discard two cards <laughs> to fuel our next treasure cruise? Thank you very much. <laughs> we will discard two fast leads. Your go. Is this deck busted? Maybe this deck's actually legit. I was thinking this might be kind of like an against the odds deck. You could also like, oh man, almost make it a budget deck. If you played a budget mana base, it would be hard to make it arena budget friendly, right? Because you need Prof Cedric Memory. You really need the Steam Core Scholar. But like the Ops, Fatal Pushes, Treasure Cruises, a lot of the support cards are lower rarity. Could almost make it a budget deck, almost. It might be possible to make a paper budget deck. Again, like just really powering down the mana base, but all right, on to game three. Opponents on the play, dragons versus essentially card draw tribal. <laughs> Props Edric memory, this fatal push. After game one, I'm just not convinced fatal push is, is good at all, but I guess we keep it. Opponent, tap land. Well, fast land. Go. Opponent. Orb of dragon kind. Well, we will opt. We will keep a thought seize. How greedy are we? Oh, there's Prop Cedric Memory. So the safe play is just thought seize. The best would be Prop Cedric Memory. Yeah, we're going to go for it. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't go too poorly. Ooh, Blot Out makes this much better. So now even if our opponent has something this turn, we can at least kill it. It's sushi. Ooh, double blot out. Okay. Well, we drew both of the sideboard blot outs, which is really good news for us. I think we can let the Itsushi live for a turn. I really want to play Ledger Shredder and then opt. Or actually, Thought Seize is even better. Let's Thought Seize. But it triggers Ledger Shredder and it's going to grow. So, ooh, Dragon Fire. Oh, this actually worked out perfectly. We take a Dragon Fire, but our Ledger Shredder, because of Prof's Edric Memory, too big to be killed by Dragon Fire. Opponent going to get in. No block this turn. We have these blot outs, so we have a good answer for the Dragon next turn. Opponent with the tap land. Rona. Well, hmm. Let's play the land. Let's opt. Draw a card. Dark Slick Shores to the bottom. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna play it safe and kill it. We could run out the seam corn and just make our ledger shredder even bigger, but getting rid of the dragon feels good. Can pitch a Rona. Are they gonna kill their Itsushi just to get the trigger? I don't know about that. Is that correct? Maybe it's correct. They're gonna go for it. Alright, so opponent does not want Itsushi exiled. Kills it. Death trigger finds a Ribaz. Okay, that actually kind of worked out for our opponent. Well, grow the ledger shredder. We do have a lot of targets that they can kill with dragon fire though. So our opponents should be out of removal. They shouldn't have much, uh, much removal left. I mean, they're out of removal in hand, but I don't know how much more like they've used two dragons fires and we just haven't seen any other removal spells. So we might be good. I like, gotta play the rib as yeah. Our creatures just get so big, so quick in this deck. I mean, I guess if they drew some other removal spell, maybe you let rib go to kill. Yeah. Okay. So opponent plays the rib as. They can play the Tsushi next turn if we don't kill the Ribaz. 
Uh, hmm. How greedy are we? <laughs> In our perfect world, we steam core scholar into, well, uh, like, do we just let them play the sushi? You know, this is ridiculous, but what we're gonna do, and this is probably wrong, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna fatal push the Rivaz to up our storm. Top our storm cow. <laughs> no, it doesn't kill it because there's no revolt. But then Ledger Shredder triggers. Discard a Rona. Get rid of the Rivaz. So now our Ledger Shredder becomes big enough that we have a two turn clock. Hit ya. And opponent, they got to draw a way to stop or answer the Ledger Shredder this turn or, or we got him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about guessing that. I guess I just think Fatal Push does nothing in this matchup, which probably means we should have sideboarded it out all the way. We sideboarded down, but we didn't side it all the way out. Terror of the Peaks. Ah, oh, that dragon animation. I miss I miss animations for more cards. We can't literally win here because our opponent can chump. Unless we draw, yeah, another removal spell like Shield or Z. <laughs> all right, discard the Ledger Shredder. Uh, Treasure Cruise? Treasure Cruises card. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah, like Treasure Cruise need to be even better. <laughs> Not only does it draw us a ton of cards, it triggers Connive on our Ledger Shredder, and <laughs> it also is gonna add an absurd number of counters to our team. The best Ledger Shredder ever. Actually, I don't even think we put it on Ledger Shredder. We just grow the Scholar. We already have Lethal here. They already have to Chump Block, so we might as well make a second Lethal Threat. An opponent. We're gonna thought is make sure you got nothing going on and it's two lands and I guess they can sack their orb, but they really need a wrath. They need Crux of Fate. <laughs> I could see them actually have Crux of Fate in their deck since they're a dragon deck. That seems possible. About it, cracks the orb. Looking for a dragon, but I don't think a dragon does it. They find a Tiamat. Tiamat, really good, but a little slow here. Another orb of dragon kind and the GG's and prop Cedric memory. <laughs> Taking down the dragons. Yes, 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 yes. We are doing some more props Edric memoring. And I guess we're we're just a number this game. <laughs> so far, this deck feels kind of busted. Did we break it? <laughs> Actually, did infamous small Japanese tournament player break it? Looks like the kind of hand we want. Hello, opponent. Golgari, A. Oh, boy. And the Scholar. This hand keeps getting better. I will say, I am a little afraid of Shieldred. <laughs> scavenging Ooze. So scavenging, scavenging Ooze is annoying. I don't think it's really deadly, but it is annoying. I guess we'll keep another consider. Tegnuma, A. Eh? Well, uh, let's get down Prof's Edric memory. Draw a card. Tap land and. Oh, Chevelle, A. Eh? Ha. Huh. Removal? Oh, this is very awkward. I feel like if we play a creature, if you're playing Chevelle, you're gonna have a bunch of removal. I feel like if we play a creature, we're just gonna like set our opponent up to put a bounty counter on it and kill it and draw a card, but we probably don't have a choice. Our hand is just all creatures. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, play the land and I guess we run out the worst of the creatures. I was hoping we'd like hit a removal spell, treasure cruise. Well, treasure cruise is good if our opponent doesn't start oozing. Grow the dork, but yeah, I don't have much faith in this living against the Cheval deck. Opponent, bounty counter, kills it. Gains, draws, snowballs. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the problem, right? The first creature we play, they kill it, they do that thing. Then they have more cards to do it again on the next one. We really just need a, a removal spell. We really just need a fatal push. Can we just draw a fatal push, please? Also worth mentioning, one part of Prof. Cedric memory that is not usually relevant to our deck, but might be relevant here, is it does give no max hand size. We have so many looting effects that we usually don't have a handful of cards, but we can have a... Still no Fatal Push. Where are our Fatal Pushes this game? Oh, play the land. Pass the turn. Do not discard the hand size. Thank you, Prof's Edric Memory. All right, now our opponent's gonna start oozing. I guess if they were gonna do nothing, they... Well, they're probably leaving up removal. Actually, I don't know. If you have removal, do you want to cast it before you Chevelle? Probably not. This is not looking good. Oh, and then the full nightmare. 
Another evangel. We've just drawn all of our creatures this game and <laughs> what a weird draw. Ah, oh, and this is the wrong matchup for it. Normally just a bunch of creatures and prop Cedric memory would be all right, but not drawing any removal is kind of killing us. All right, shield rids us. Yeah, we're just, we're done. We are done. Could not find the removal spell. Ooh, have we finally met our match? I was starting to think this deck was just like secretly busted. And maybe it still is, but that was rough. We'll bring in the blot outs. That can answer shield rid at least. We'll bring in our, oh, our own shield rid maybe? Shield rid to match our opponent's shield rid? All right. On to game number two, can we draw enough cards to beat a shield rid? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, we have our blot out. We're going to keep this. It's, there is some risk, right? We have a consider. So hopefully this consider finds land number two. Once we find land number two, then we can find land number three. Okay, so lands are not going to be a problem. Our opponent's deck still might be a problem. Opponent. Surveils away a meat hook massacre. Well, let's just take Numa and yeah, we'll play Ledger Shredder. Get down the bird lawyer. It was supposed to be a bird lawyer, right? But then they changed it to bird accountant because Watsy got the got the fear. <laughs> Opponent plays a land. Chevelle again. Well, now we might have to blot out Chevelle. Well, let's get rid of the Chevelle. Get in for one. Pass the turn about it. Tap land and Liliana. All right, opponent, gonna tick up. Or tick down, yeah, that makes sense. Well, let's get down the Scholar. This is kind of okay, right? So we get to draw two lands. Draw two lands with a Scholar, but we get to use the Scholar to kill Liliana. We can discard the land probably. As long as there's not a shield rid. We're kind of in okay shape. I Maybe we need a touch more removal for Shieldred. Glisa. Okay. And Thought Seize. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we really just need a removal spell again. Yeah, this deck seems to match up really well with uh, with our deck in a weird way. They got plenty of removal for our stuff. Shieldred's kind of a nightmare. And then stuff like Glissa is just good against us building a big creature with Prof. Cedric memory. Well, I gotta kill Liliana or it's gonna kill another one of our things. And then I guess we just like Ledger Shredder into Evangel, get a bunch of useless triggers, discard a land we didn't want, discard a Prof. Cedric memory that honestly we kind of did want. So I think we need Shieldred to not show up and we need to draw Treasure Cruise. If she Shieldred, uh, yeah, opponent gets to draw more cards, which I do not like, but Glissa is hard to tangle with in combat. Opponent, another land, and <sighs> not good. Not good. All right, well, I mean, go. I guess we get in for two because we got some flyers or three since we have some flyers. All right, looks like two after all. Fatal push on the bird lawyer. Opponent. <sighs> Aklazots. <laughs> oh boy, that's also we do a lot of looting, and that's gonna make a bunch of flyers. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost like our opponent's deck was just built to beat our deck. <laughs> opponent came with the Prof's Edric memory tech in mind. Jeez. So obviously we got absolutely crushed last round, which yeah, is annoying, but overall this deck seems really sweet. I mean, in theory, I guess we could keep it with the two considers, but five lands. Well, I mean, we also have Scholar that loots. Rona can loot. Uh, I'm actually on the fence. Maybe a bunch of lands isn't the end of the world with this deck, because we can turn those lands into other cards, like more lands, probably. Thanks, Arena Shuffler. <laughs> But we can loot and rummage them away, so maybe, maybe it's fine to keep? Yeah, I think we gotta chip it. Well, okay, we were rewarded. The other thing I've learned about this deck, and this isn't a, you know, a zombie hunt or something, where you're like, I'm in a mall of the three to find my namesake card, but as we have seen throughout our games, the games where we have Prof's Edric memory go way differently than the games where we don't. Our creatures are pretty underpowered, honestly, when we don't have Prof's Edric Memory powering them up. Ooh, is it a? Is it a? So maybe some Phoenix action? Well, tap line go. About it. Blaze land. Little anticipation. Maybe we just get, hmm. 
get down the prop Cedric memory before our opponent can uh, can counter it. They are tapped down. And their deck, if there is it, they definitely get have spell pierces or more. Yeah, let's let's get I mean, you don't play prop Cedric memory and then pass up a chance to play it and draw on. <laughs> Another another one. We got all the Prop Cedric memories. That's the other thing. Like, yes, it's legendary. We can have two on the battlefield, but they still can drip, right? So worst case, if we legend rule ourselves, it's two mana cycling, essentially, which does minimize the downside of it being a legend. And honestly, I think I mentioned this before, but with how strong this card is when you build around it, it's probably actually good you can't stack them up. This would get... Can you imagine how wild our deck would get if you could have two or three prop cedric memories on the battlefield and you're like treasure cruise and put nine counters on something <laughs> uh, opponent does some is it charming yeah i guess we just evangel evangeline loot do we need yeah we can probably pitch a pathway we're gonna play a tap land here anyway get down the dual land get a counter pass the turn the extra counter actually is kind of funny too it just like it throws off a lot of the pioneer removal now they're see the truth is our opponent desperate for lands but like it throws off any sort of red removal, fiery impulses, and even like that is it charm we saw. The extra counter a lot of times means our opponent can't kill something that they could have killed otherwise. We're about to start growing our creatures. I guess we can Ledger Shredder. Do we need to leave up removal for any reason? Like what's the worst case? There's no Phoenix in the graveyard. Plus if they get back a bunch of Phoenixes, yeah, let's just, let's just do it. Ledger Shredder, play the land, run out the Rona, Ledger Shredder connives to draw a card we can yeah we'll pitch the props edric memory here save the lands counter on the vangel hit you for five down to 15 and we're kind of off to a pretty aggro start here maybe we can just race the phoenixes we do have a removal spell and if rona lives we'd start looting and growing our dorks lightning axe well there goes our biggest threat although the nice thing about prop cedric memory is <laughs> none of our creatures oh opponents got the cruise okay well we get to connive at least yeah get rid of the land one of the nice things about uh about our deck is our creatures aren't that good <laughs> i don't know maybe that's not actually an upside the way i'm <laughs> the way it's entered in my head was better than that our creatures suck that's an upside but uh the upside is all of our creatures can be very good because of Prop Cedric Memory. None of our creatures on their own are especially strong, but Prop Cedric Memory with a bunch of card draw can turn any random Rona or Steam Core Scholar or whatever Evangel set this into a really absurd creature. We would like to double spell here, probably trigger the Ledger Shredders. Our opponent has no red mana, so we don't got to worry about a Lightning Axe at the moment. So discard the tap land. Let's play Ledger Shredder. I guess we just Legend Rule. Seems worth it. We get to untap Rona, double connive. And if it resolves, draw another card. Well, discard the land and do a little conniving. Discard, ooh, there's our Steam Core. Discard the Vangel. Prop Cedric Memory, Legend Rules draws. A Tuara, loot with Rona, do even more drawing. Ah, uh, well, I think we hold on to the Tuara. We're going to get a couple of counters here, I think. Yeah, I mean, let's grow the one that can attack. Get that tur uh, two turn clock going. Opponent considers. Leaves it on top. Well, hit you for eight. And opponent, you need an answer because. <laughs> The bird lawyers are coming and they are big. A bonnet plays a land. But why are we not dying to phoenixes? Fiery impulse. Every card our opponents played is a phoenix card. We just, uh, crackling drake. Yeah, all right. I mean, I guess they could not be a phoenix deck. This is good for us because we win. Uh, let's, let's grow our team a little bit. <laughs> Our opponent doesn't know we have this bitter ordeal or a bitter triumph in hand. Uh, so let's loot with Rona and play. I just want to see how much this Prop Cedric memory can actually do. Like we do have lethal. Oh my God, treasure cruise. We can't cast the treasure cruise though. Actually, can we? No, we can't. I was wondering if we could cast it and still have lethal, but I mean, we do. We do actually have to win. We will pay three life. Kill the crackles. 
Ledger Shredder connives an opponent, doesn't even wait to see the counter, scoops it up. Well, that went really well. The question is, is our opponent actually a Phoenix deck? Or are they like a, is it Spellslinger Crackling Drake deck? If you look at a Phoenix deck list, Crackling Drake in the main is really rare. Like that's just not a thing Phoenix does. That's the thing that has me wondering. If we did not see that Crackling Drake, 100% convinced that, uh, that it would be Phoenix that just had an awkward draw. But seeing that Crackling Drake makes me think maybe it's not. And why this matters is Leyline of the Void. Because Crackling Drake, it doesn't care. Like, it triggers on stuff in Exile anyway. Phoenix, Leyline is our best card. If they're not playing Phoenix, then Leyline's kind of meh. Like, I guess it slows down your Treasure Cruise. But I don't usually bring in Leyline just to hit on Treasure Cruise. We definitely are going to bring in the Blot Outs. Bring in the Shieldred. Bring in the Kaido, maybe. I think we wait on Leyline. We might regret this. This <laughs> this might be way too greedy. Yeah, bring in the last Blot Out. We're just going to run it like that. So, I mean, if we get crushed by a bunch of hasty Phoenixes this game, then we'll bring in Leyline for game three. I feel like, I don't know, that Crackling Drake got me thinking it's like, a, is it Spellslinger Brew rather than someone that's just playing like tier Phoenix? All right, opponents on the play. Our hand is, I mean, we're going to keep this. It's, we got two considers. No props to Edric Memory, but assuming we hit our lands off these considers, it's a, it's a pretty good hand. Not a bad hand by any means, opponent. Creature land, well, okay. That is a land, so that's fine. I guess we'd rather have black mana, but opponent untapped steam vents. Ooh, third path. I okay, now we actually kind of need black mana. All right, water grave will do it. That'll that'll do, that'll do. Oh, yeah, third path iconoclast. If we can't kill that, it is going to make a bunch of dorks. But Shieldred's Edict got it covered. Opponent mountain and passes. Let's play the land. Let's do a little thought seizing. See what our opponent's working with over there. What are you up to? So we can play around Stubborn Denial, especially if there's not a four power creature out for Ferocious. I guess we just take the Drake. Take the Drake, play the Rona. Our opponent technically can't even kill it at the moment. Wow, is it charm loot mode? I mean, so I guess our opponent's down to two cards, however. However, we know they're playing Treasure Cruise just like we are, so uh, a little deceptive, right? They will find, and this turns on the Fiery Impulse to kill the Rona, which honestly we don't care about because we got another one in hand. Um, Crackling Drake. Thankfully only a 3-4, but we do not have an answer for that at the moment. Let's consider. Without props to Edric Memory, that doesn't actually stop the Drake. Well, more Ronas doesn't actually stop the Drake either. Well, let's play the Steam Core scholar and okay blot out is good yeah we'll discard the bird lawyer that's fine we have enough that we can treasure cruise next turn and blot out our opponent discarded the stubborn denial so hopefully we're good on that so it's looking like our opponent maybe is not playing phoenixes oh they're playing a lot of crackling drakes that is for sure crackling drake technically number three because we thought sees one opponent gets in we'll take it out of 13. well Let's do a little cruising. Exile everything. Draw three. No prop Cedric memory at the moment. Ooh, but there's a prop Cedric memory. This works out really well. So we get to play. I mean, our opponent's playing one of the biggest flyers that you can play if you build around it in Crackling Drake. And I'm pretty sure we're just going to outscale it. Oh, <laughs> Shield Red 2. Oh, that's so brutal. Uh, now we get to Bitter Triumph. We can discard a Rona, which we definitely don't need two of. Plus, we kind of want to fill the graveyard. Get rid of the Crackling Drake. Go to combat. That is now a 6-6 six, six smashing you, opponent. <laughs> Prop Cedric Memory is actually really good. I am blown away by how strong this card is. It's actually really... It, it, like, I haven't just haven't seen anyone play it. I haven't heard anyone talk about it, play it. It feels really good. And the deck plays really good. I really like it. I'm actually, like, very surprised at how well this deck is played. It's played way better than I would have expected. Opponent, reading Prop Cedric Memory, realizing... They're doing all this work to make a Crackling Drake when you could just draw cards and play a Prop Cedric Memory and any of your things. Whoa. All right. Well, I mean, that is a temporary solution for our opponent. They do get rid of the, the Scholar momentarily. The problem for our opponent is yeah, we're going to do this now in case they have Spell Pierce to get rid of the Drake. The problem for our opponent is we just do it again. Like, it's coming back. The counters will add up again. This is what our deck does. It just keeps growing these things. Well, Steam Core Scholar. 
draw some cards, discard a thought seize, go to combat, make it a four, four, three mana Sarah Angel that will continue to grow. So how does, hmm, yeah, Shieldred probably just slams the door shut, I think. We almost don't even really need it, honestly. Shieldred is like, it's kind of funny. We're not a Shieldred deck, but it's kind of a hate card for our deck. We bring it in against like other Shieldred decks. We bring it in against Treasure Cruise decks to just like punish the mass card draw. So we're using Shieldred more like a hate card than a than like a foundational threat. Lightning X pitching a spike field hazard. Well, opponent, there's bad news. You're empty handed, and that's a shield rid. And empty handed against a shield rid is not a good spot to be. Drain you down to 10, opponent. Did not draw the removal, and that is. <laughs> Prop centric memory. This card's kind of ridiculous. We might actually broke it. We might have actually broke it. <laughs> sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Propsidetic Memory in Pioneer slash Explorer? And the deck's actually kind of insane. So video-wise, we went four and one, but then I just loved the deck so much, I kept playing it, and I ran it all the way up to Mythic on Magic Arena with a 63% win rate, which is really, really good. It's one of those decks that on paper, it looks kind of janky and underpowered, but then it just plays so much better than it looks. The games where we have Propsidetic Memory on turn two are kind of insane. Like, Prophesidetic Memory on two, into Steam Score Scholar on three, make it a four, four Flying Vigilance like a Sarah Angel. And then the next turn, we usually untap and get five or six more counters on it. And it's like a nine, nine or 10, 10 Flying Vigilance. It gets out of hand really, really quickly. Once the deck gets rolling, it's just like presenting these huge creatures every turn. And that's one of the things I love about this deck is all of our creatures are pretty bad and replaceable. It's really Prophesidetic Memory that does the work in the deck. It doesn't matter which creatures we have or if our opponent kills them because the next creature is just going to get huge anyway thanks to Prophesidetic Memory. My one criticism of the deck and the one thing I would change is I think the removal is a little bit off. So the one card we really struggled with is Shieldred. Shieldred is really good at punishing card draw and all our deck really does is draw cards and if you look at our removal it's in the main deck four fatal pushes one bitter triumph one Shieldred's edict. We're really bad at triggering Fatal Push uh, Revolt in this deck. The only way we can really consistently do it outside of like trying to chump block is legend ruling ourselves, which is kind of tough and awkward. So Fatal Push doesn't really kill Shieldred. Shieldred's Edict doesn't usually kill Shieldred unless it's the only non-token creature on our opponent's board. So that leaves just Bitter Triumph as a main deck answer to Shieldred. And then even after sideboarding, we get two blood outs and then we can also bring in R1 Shieldred to try to counteract our opponent's Shieldred. So I would say, I think there's two possibilities for fixing this deck, or maybe both of them apply. One is just add more hard removal, more like bitter triumphs or go for the throat, something that's just like, kill your shieldred every time, get it off the battlefield. So I think that's probably necessary. Another possibility that I think could work is with the mana base. So one thing we could do is add like fabled passage to our mana base, maybe trim back on the pathways, which are kind of clunky sometimes anyway, maybe trim back on the pathways in like the pain land, play another basic or two, because Fable Passage is just a really easy, consistent way to let Fatal Push kill bigger creatures like Shieldred. So I think with some combination of those two things to solve the Shieldred problem, then the deck gets even better. But like I said, I mean, even with Shieldred kind of being a nightmare, we had a 63% win rate and got all the way to Mythic with the deck. So if you like drawing cards and you like turning janky underpowered creatures into some of the biggest threats around, I would definitely recommend this deck. I always know a deck is fun when I finish recording the video and I still just keep playing it for fun off camera again and again and again. And this was one of those decks where I've like 30 best of three matches into this deck now just because I really love playing it and it's just super fun to play. So that's Props Eidetic Memory. That's been our Much Brew for this week. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.